In this tutorial, we will create a new project and add a self-supported tall process column CHP gas CO2 scrubber. This column has skirts shell and anchor chairs for its supporting. This column has a 900 mm ID shell with total shell length of 16.8 meters and has top and bottom dished ends. The skirt section is 12 meters long, conical shape with the top diameter of 900 mm and the bottom diameter of 1460 mm. The column is subjected to wind and seismic loadings in addition to pressure and temperature loadings. The software uses conjugate beam theory procedure for designing of tall columns and draws information from various internationally well accepted and popular references like H. H. Bedner, Brownwell and Young and others. It also applies appropriate ASME Section 8 Division 1 code clauses. The column shell is divided into four segments, the top one of 4.8 meters length and the other four of 4 meters length in the main shell assembly and has an additional segment of 12 meters for skirt is reflected in the support assembly. To begin with, we will first create a new project and update the project tree node as indicated. First, click on the project in the project explorer to select it and make it the current project. This will ensure that the new equipment column would be added to the selected project. Click on the equipment menu and select tall columns. Let us now fill all the appropriate details that need to be filled in the displayed equipment configuration dialog. This dialog has various divisions for defining and they are the vapor chamber for large vapor collection chambers at the top, main shell for defining the various main shell sections and the bottom receiver shell for defining the bottom receiver section. The column under consideration doesn't have either the vapor chamber or the receiver shell and therefore no entries are made in this area. Let's proceed to filling in all the configuration come dimensional details. Click on the Dialogs button OK. The equipment will be added to the current selected project in the Project Explorer with the equipment name HP Gas CO2 Scrubber. Under the entry HP Gas CO2 Scrubber, a tree list is generated wherein various details for the equipment can be seen, defined and or updated. Before we move further, it is important to understand the various parts of the equipment tree contents in the Project Explorer. At this point, it is emphasized that in case you haven't seen the tutorial on the software basics, we suggest you see the same before continuing with this tutorial. Click on the entry HP Gas CO2 Scrubber, which by itself is a major definition entry, wherein the major configurational or dimensional details are defined. You can update the contents in the properties window in case you need any changes. The next step is to input the design data information. For this, locate the tree entry design data and then locate the shell design data entry within. A tall process column equipment like this one has only the shell side design data. A pressure chamber's design information contains some entries for defining the pressure and temperature for the operating design and hydro test conditions. First enter the operating conditions, pressure and temperature data. Please note that the pressure units are KGF per square mm gauge. You may also note that each numerical entry field in the properties window is a calculator field. Having updated the operating data information, now you can proceed to updating of design condition information. Select the applicable radiographic examination in the tree node radiography.
No updating in the allowances is required as internal corrosion allowance in this case is zero. The next step is to apply the material of construction for various components. You can define the material of construction for the various component types and common areas in the save the time required in defining materials for each individual component. The definition of material is covered under the equipment subtree material specs in the project explorer. Let's begin by defining material for the main vessel components. For this, select the material spec com box on the left side vertical menu strip and select from the list of predefined material specs or the data sets. The software user can update, add, modify or change these data sets. You can learn more on this at later stages. The next step is to define the material for nozzles or the connections. This completes the material definitions. By following the entire above process, we have defined the equipment configuration, its overall dimensions, design data like pressures, temperatures under various conditions, radiography, corrosion allowance, etc. and have defined materials for the various components. While following the above procedure, you may have noticed that you have done minimum definitions or entered minimum inputs. The other entries have been left blank or empty and the software will select the appropriate values for them. You may have also noticed that the column shell is divided into four sections. While designing, the software automatically transfers loadings such as wind, seismic, dead weight loads, etc. that are on the top sections to the bottom sections and thus ensures strength adequacy of each section to withstand loads due to items located overhead. The divisioning of the overall shell length into small sections also enhances the accuracy of the wind and seismic load calculations. It also helps in the accurate estimation of the column's natural time period by Rayleigh-Ritz method. At this stage, let us proceed to the designing of the equipment. First, you have to ensure that the equipment you want to design is the current equipment in case there are multiple equipments in the project. To make any equipment the currently selected one, click on the equipment tag or any other item in its tree. Now select the submenu design equipment in the top menu design model to begin the design of the equipment. While the equipment is designed, any design warning or errors that occur are displayed in the errors and warnings window. The warnings are displayed in black color and any severe errors displayed in red. In case of warnings, the user can review them and take the necessary corrective action if required. While in case of errors, the user has to take the necessary corrective action for the equipment design to proceed further. You can notice that there are certain warnings only and that there are no errors displayed in the errors and warnings window. For the moment, let us ignore the warnings. The next logical step is to see the design output. Let's proceed to see the design output for the top item, dish top. Click on the dish top object and generate the report for it by selecting the submenu code report from the top menu create report. The design output is displayed in an area called the output window which is a tabbed page. The top of each output window has tab entries and on clicking each tab you can see the output for that particular design condition. Now click on the main shell one object and generate the report for it by selecting the submenu code report from the top menu create report. This will display the design report for the main shell one object. You can use the right side scroll bar in the output window to scroll the report for more details. Now click on the main shell 4 object and generate the report for it by selecting submenu code report from the top menu create report. This will display the design report for the main shell 4 object. The first part of the report shows the calculations for the pressure loadings only as per UG27 and or UG28. As you scroll down, you can see the other parts of the calculation report which are combined load calculations as per Appendix L, covering the longitudinal stresses developed due for wind loads under empty weight condition and the other for seismic load with operating weight condition. Click on the pressure and temperature operating subtree node under the subtree node shell design data in the design data and generate the report. You can study this report for details. It displays various item-wise effective design pressure.
These effective design pressures are transferred to each individual item's design. Now select the pressure and temperature design one and generate the report for it. It displays various item-wise effective design pressure. Notice that the liquid column input is zero and hence the corresponding pressure effect is zero. In short, the considered design pressure, pressure internal, includes liquid column effect and hence the additional liquid column considered as zero. Click on the wind IS87587 subtree node under the tree node wind and seismic and generate the wind load report. You can scroll and see this report for details. It displays various section wise loads and moment calculations. The applicable wind moment shown here are transferred to each individual's item design. Now click on the seismic IS189302 subtree node under the tree node wind and seismic and generate the seismic load report. You can scroll and see this report for its details. It displays various section-wise loads and moment calculations. The applicable seismic moments shown here are transferred to each individual item's design. Now click on the skirt shell subtree node under the tree node support assembly and generate its design report. The report is displayed in the output window. Now proceed to the anchor chair subtree node below the skirt shell item and generate the design report. The report is displayed in the output window. The entire anchor chair has been automatically sized to meet all the loading requirements. A well-documented detailed report for its adequacy is generated. Now let us understand how to compensate for any additional column loadings such as internal pickings, trays, ladders and platforms. You can watch the steps that are followed in achieving these requirements. Select the submenu design equipment in the top menu design model to redesign the equipment. Click on the tree node HP gas CO2 scrubber and generate its design report. Scroll watch the contents of the uncorroded design one condition.
scroll and select the foundation loads tab page of the output window. This will display the foundation load details that can be transferred to the civil department for foundation design. Last thing of importance is to note that the column lifting lugs have been automatically sized. Scroll the project window and locate the lifting lugs node in the accessories assembly. Click on the lifting lugs tree node and generate its designed report. The report shows the adequacy checking for the lifting lug. The procedure for addition of nozzles or connections, their flange etc. is same as shown in the earlier tutorials and hence it is not replicated here. You may visit the other tutorials for more information on this. For software inquiry, email us at cadem at vsnl.com. You can download a trial version of our software from our website www.cadem.in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash cadem channel. You can also follow us on www.facebook.com slash cadem india and www.linkedin.com slash company slash cadem.